Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'd like to share with you why I believe capsular fornix hydrodissection is not only a different way, but a better way to hydrodissect compared to other techniques. This is a picture of an obtuse angled hydrodissection cannula. It's placed underneath the anterior capsular rexus opening contralateral to the incision. You have to lift the anterior capsular rexus rim and you slide the cannula tip in. When you do so, it causes a tract and as you push BSS, sometimes it causes reflux of the BSS anteriorly and this can cause failure of the hydrodissection wave to propagate and you have to pick different places to push more BSS. Similarly, you can have a right angled short tip hydrodissection cannula and you place it within the anterior capsular rexus edge subincisionally and as you push that BSS Sometimes, because it is close to the anterior capsular rim, it causes reflux of the BSS anteriorly, and then again, it causes failure of the wave to propagate. So what's so special? I believe it's easy, safe, and because it's highly reproducible, it's also much more efficient and less chance for hydrodissection failure. So this is a picture of the cannula. You want to slide it out underneath the anterior capsular rexus edge contralaterally, as you can see here. And then you want to rotate the tip 90 degrees downward so that the tip is facing the optic nerve. And this is a key. You want to wiggle the cannula up and down within the plane and you want to make sure you're not pushed up against the capsule at all. And then as you do so, you want to push the plunger and this will cause easy propagation of the wave posteriorly each and every time. And then you want to decompress the bag and uh, allow some of that BSS to be released. You want to sweep up and down on the left and right sides using mechanical forces and you also want to push BSS and using hydrosection separation and you're causing disassociation of the anterior capsular rim from the lens material and as you do so it causes the lens to spin very easily without any difficulty. So why does, does this work better than other techniques? Well I believe it's because the cannula tip is much longer and it's being placed deep into the capsular fornix. And because of that, the path of least resistance is posterior and not anterior. And so when you push that plunger, it causes the BSS to propagate posteriorly almost every single time you do this. And so there's, there's some examples here. You can see the wiggle here, the wiggle, and then you push the plunger. And you can see the wave propagate nicely. You sweep to the left and you sweep to the right. And I am pushing on the plunger and causing not only mechanical but also hydro dissection of the anterior capsular rim. So again, sweep under, jiggle up and down. That wiggle move is really nice because it confirms you're in the correct position. If you don't do the wiggle and if you're um, a little bit too tense and you're pushed up against the capsular bag, then you'll get resistance. If you are pushed more centrally, then you'll get hydrodelineation. So it's very important to do that little wiggle that you just saw, sweep to the left, sweep to the right, and it causes the lens to get freed up very easily. Again, another example, rotate down, wiggle, push, dissection wave occurs very easily, sweep to the left, sweep to the right, again with mechanical forces, as well as pushing BSS on the plunger as you do so. There's a little wiggle, push, Hydrodissection wave occurs, decompress, sweep to the left and to the right, pushing BSS as you do so, and then the lens starts to move very easily. You can see these cases are not an anomaly. This is a very highly pre reproducible, consistent technique. Uh, these cases were over the last couple of days I've done, and um, I picked the ones that were in focus just uh, because of the quality of the videos. And you can just see, it just happens very easily. Remember, if you use hydrodissection techniques with the typical cannulas, obtuse cannulas, or the very short uh, right angle cannulas, it, you don't get that hydrodissection wave that very first try. And sometimes you have to pick your spots and do it again. And as you do that, it causes the liberation of lens material. It, it obscures your view. You're not quite sure if you got it. And sometimes you can't spin the lens. And so if you can't spin the lens, it probably means that the, the lens isn't freed very well. And if you can't spin the lens, that can affect your ability to disassemble the uh, lens 
and it can just make the subsequent steps much more difficult. You can see even in these smaller uh, pupils, you do the same technique um, and you follow the same principles and you're able to get that dissection wave uh, and you're able to spin the lens very easily. Again, you can do this technique without uh, with big or small pupils and uh, you can uh, place that cannula deeply without any uh, risk or safety concerns. Um, although you might not be familiar or comfortable with these techniques, with practice and as you can see with these uh, maneuvers, it happens uh, very easily without difficulty. Now sometimes a wave doesn't uh, come very easily, you can feel a little resistance and that's when you have to do a little bit of more wiggling and as you wiggle that wave will occur. And so again uh, comparing this to other techniques if you have to pick your spots and, and you have failure um, unfortunately it seems that if you have failure once that you'll uh, continue to have failure and uh, some people just give up and if the lens doesn't spin freely they might have to do a hydrodelineation wave and with hydrodelineation, unfortunately, it doesn't really uh, necessarily cause the lens to spin very easily uh, when you have hydrodelineation. And so, uh, again, you're seeing example after example after example of how uh, easy this technique is. Remember, you want to slide that cannula out, make that little wiggle uh, maneuver to ensure you're in that little space in the fornix. You push that BSS cannula and it just flows very easily. You want to free up the anterior capsular rim to the left and to the right. And as you do so, it causes the lens to spin very easily without any difficulty. And that allows you to perform your typical lens disassembly techniques, as most techniques do rely on a free lens. And so again, uh, this is a final example. Wiggle, push, hydrodissection occurs, decompress, sweep to the left, and to the right and the lens spins very easily. This cannula and tip have made hydrodissection an easy, no fuss part of my cataract surgery and I hope it's helpful to you. Thank you for your attention.